Hi, I'm Neil Feit of the SUNY Fredonia Department of Philosophy. Here I'm going to be talking about using the abbreviated truth table method to show that a given argument is valid or invalid, as the case might be. And I'm going to work with the Power of Logic Web Tutor here. I'm working with the 4th edition website, but I suspect the 5th edition website is similar with respect to the exercises of this chapter, Chapter 7. Um, I'm going to pick an exercise from 7.4b here. Alrighty. Um, notice that we're told in the instructions that the arguments are invalid, okay? And we're supposed to show that that's the case using abbreviated truth tables. I'm going to select exercise 5 to begin with, okay? And I'm going to kind of center that. Alright. I'm going to left click anywhere in the first row there to get the cursor there. And you can move the arrow keys back and forth to, to get around here. I have my caps lock button on because it wants a capital T for true and capital F for false. So, what is this method all about? The idea is to suppose or hypothesize that we can have true premises here and a false conclusion. Alrighty? In other words, the idea is to hypothesize that this argument is invalid, that there is a row on its truth table where true premises lead to a false conclusion. Okay? And the idea is if we can confirm this by filling in values for, in this case, Z, H, uh, Y, and, and W, if we can confirm this and, and um, make, make it so that the premises are true and the conclusion false, we've shown that the argument is invalid, as we hypothesize. If we can't do that, we've shown that our hypothesis is false and we can conclude that the argument is uh, valid after all. Okay? Um, so, notice here, I'm going to work with the conclusion first in this case. Notice here that the conclusion is a conditional that we want to be false. The only way to make a conditional false is to make a true antecedent. Okay, and notice that not W is the antecedent. So that's what I made true, making W false. Okay, and I'm going to hit the delete key just to get that F under the main operator there. Sometimes the operators are called connectives. Uh, by this program, the web tutor, and I have to make um, the consequent false. Okay, so by making, in this case, W and Y both false, I made the conclusion of this argument false. Okay, the next step is to filter or percolate those values through the the row of the table wherever you see them. Okay, so wherever I see a W or a Y, I'm going to make it false. Okay, this this means that we're going to have a consistent assignment. Of, of truth values. Um, if you were doing a full truth table, you couldn't have a row where, for example, a letter had different values. It was, it was T somewhere and F somewhere else. The same statement can't be both true and false in a given possibility. Um, so I see a Y here. I made that false. And I guess uh, that's about it. Okay. Um, notice Sometimes I kind of like to work backwards, left, uh, right to left, you know. But notice here, no matter what I do um, for H here, uh, the value of that conditional is going to be true. It doesn't matter what H is. Uh, if it's F arrow T, it's going to be a true arrow statement. If it's F arrow F, it's going to be a true arrow statement. So in other words, I'm not forced to put in a value for H there, okay? So I'm going to hold off on that. If I'm not forced to assign a value, I'm going to go somewhere else where I am forced to assign a value. So moving backwards here to the second premise, I want this conditional to be true, but I know that Y, the consequent, is false. So the only way it could be true is if the antecedent is also false, and hence the antecedent being not Z, hence Z itself must be true. Delete, delete. Okay, so in other words, uh, F arrow F is a true conditional, whereas T arrow F would not be a true conditional. Okay, so I made Z true, and that was the only way I was forced to do that, to make that premise true. So I'm going to put Z in as true here, because I see it here in the first premise. Still nothing forces me to do anything about H. But now, when I look at the first premise, I want that premise to be true. Okay, I have a true under the tilde there, the, the main operator. Um, so that tilde is negating this conjunction, this dot. So if the tilde is true, this dot has to be false. Okay. Delete. Okay. Uh, so I want that conjunction, z dot h, to be false. But given that z is true, that means that h has to be false. Okay. So now I am forced to assign a value to h, in particular the false value. Okay. And I have succeeded now in um, assigning values in such a way that the premises are true on this assignment and the conclusion is false, okay? 
what we need to do here is to go back to the base column, so to speak, and just basically record the values that we've assigned. So we made Z true, uh, we made H false, we made Y um, false, and we made W uh, false as well. Okay. So I am supposing when I'm going to hit this invalid button, because we have shown the argument to be invalid, that it's going to tell me that I'm correct. Okay. Before I do that, I'll just mention that since we have um, four statement letters here, four atomics, Okay, this would require a 16 row truth table, okay, to do the full truth table method. And on one of those rows, you'd have, well, you'd have this assignment of values. And on that row, you would find true premises, these true premises, and the false conclusion, and you would put an asterisk there. And you would say, oh, I found a counterexample. The argument is, uh, is um, invalid. Okay. Um, so what we've did is we've abbreviated that here. We've, we've first, uh, picked a row where the conclusion is false and shown that we can make the premises true on that row. So I'm going to hit invalid and um, it tells me that I'm correct. Okay. Um, I'm going to briefly show what this, what this method rather looks like with a valid argument. I'm going to go to um, 7.4c. Okay. And I'm just going to do the first one here because What's important here is the method and not the specifics of the example. Okay. Um, I think we were also told. Oh no, I think I think the idea is to determine whether this is valid or not. Okay. Um, so just like before, uh, I'm going to suppose that the premise is true, and this argument has only one premise, by the way. But that's just just. Uh, accidental fact about this argument. It doesn't matter how many premises an argument has. 1, 2, 3, 17. And I'm going to make the conclusion false. Okay. Well, the only way to make that conclusion false is if we have a true antecedent and a false consequent. So I made A true and B false. But um, so if B is uh, false here and A is true, that means not A is false. Okay. Okay. Um, look what happens here, though. Um, the first premise is a disjunction, but look what I had to do. I had to make the left disjunct false and the right disjunct false. So it's an F or F statement. Okay. That means that it it is impossible for it to be true as I originally hypothesized. Okay. So if we were doing this on paper. Um, we would make our T slash F symbol in a circle and say, no, uh, we, we disconfirmed our hypothesis that all the premises could be true with a false conclusion. The program just wants you to put in sort of a, a slash there instead. Okay, and we're going to hit valid. And it says, correct, the argument is valid. Okay, notice that um, I didn't assign values here. That's because we couldn't, we couldn't assign values to A and B uh, in such a way that true premises lead to a false conclusion. Okay, so if the argument is valid and you've demonstrated that, you don't need to and you shouldn't put in values because you, you, you were unable to find values to confirm the hypothesis that the argument was, was not valid. Okay, so that's what this method looks like, at least um, on the web tutor, when you come across a, a valid argument. You know, having made the conclusion false, there's going to be no way to make all the premises true. Okay, I'm going to do one more before. Um, ending this video, I'm going to do one, um, I think I'm going to go back to 7.4b. Okay. This is where we are told that the arguments are invalid. And I'm going to go down to number 7 this time, okay. Alrighty. So again, I want my premises to be true under the main operator. Make them true. I want my conclusion to be false. Okay. Um, we have to be a little bit more careful when there's one, well, more than one way, excuse me, more than one way to make the conclusion false. Okay. So this method is uh, extremely convenient if the conclusion is uh, a statement letter, for example, an atomic, just make it false. If it's a negation, you just, you just make the negation false and then whatever uh, if, it, if it's a negated atomic, the, the atomic's got to be true. Or a disjunction. The only way to dis make a disjunction false is to make both sides false. There's only one way to do that. Or, or a conditional. There's only one way to make a, 
an arrow false, T-R-O-F, okay? But a conjunction here, there's lots of ways to make it false, okay? There's three different ways to make it false. Um, suppose I just want to sort of go easy on myself, or maybe that's one way to think. I just want to make both conjuncts false. If both conjuncts are false, the conjunction's definitely false, okay? So I made not be false, I'm going to be true. So I made C false and B true. I'm going to kind of maybe filter those through. Um, C false be true, okay? Well, having made C false, I'm looking at premise three now, the rightmost premise. Having made C false, to make this conditional true, I need, I need the antecedent to be false as well, and therefore I need A to be true, because not A is false, okay? So I made A true. Okay, notice I'm, uh, if you look at the second premise, it doesn't matter what z is, whether whether z is true or false. In that second premise, the conditional is going to be true. So I'm not forced to do anything there. I'm going to keep on going. Okay. Um, the first premise then is a negated conditional. Okay. Well, if the negation is true, the conditional's got to be false. Okay. Um, notice now that. Um, I can't make that conditional false, okay? I, because a, a is true, so anything arrow A is going to be true, okay? Um, so no matter what I put in for Z here, you know, um, you might say, oh, okay, I'll just make it true. It doesn't really matter. And I, of course, it didn't matter here anyway. We made it true, okay? Um, but that T arrow T is not false, but T rather, okay? So if, if I were really showing that this is a valid argument in this program, what I would say is, no, no, this can't be true after all. I've got to make it a, a T slash F or just a slash there. And um, I would show that this argument is valid, okay? Um, so if you're tempted to click valid and say, oh, having made the conclusion false, I could not make the premises true, you're going to be wrong, okay? Validity is not demonstrated. And this program actually gives you some good feedback here. Um, it does not, does not demonstrate that the argument is valid either. There are still more truth value assignments that make the conclusion false. Okay, So the idea here is that um, if there's more than one way to make the conclusion false, okay, you really have to show that you, to show that the argument is valid, you, sh you have to show that you can't make all premises true um, however you make the conclusion false. You have to show that whenever the conclusion is false, you can't make all premises true. But I've just shown that, it, that well, in one, in one possible case, one of three possible cases where this um, conclusion is false, uh, the premises can't all be true. But I haven't shown that in every way that the conclusion is false, you can't have all true premises. Okay, so what I could do here is just kind of erase what I've done, or actually what I could do is um, just do another line of this truth table. Um, above your enter key, there is sort of a, I forget if that's a slash or a backslash, but if I do a shift there, you'll either see um, a horizontal line or maybe two, hori two hori uh, excuse me, a vertical line or two small vertical lines. If you do shift that, you'll get a vertical line here. And I'm going to just basically do exactly what I was doing before. I want the premises to be true, and I want the conclusion to be false. Okay. Um, now, however, I might try a different way. Maybe, maybe I'll make C true this time and make um, not be false. A T dot F is going to be F, so I have to make B true. Okay. So I made C true. Okay. Um, and I made um, B true. B true. Okay. Um, notice now that in premises two and three, I'm not forced to, to make any moves with a with a, um, a true consequent in both of those cases, B and C. A true consequent in both of those cases. It doesn't matter what the antecedent is. So I'm going to move to premise one. Okay. So again, I want that negation to be true. So I want what it's negating, the arrow, to be false. And the only way that an arrow statement can be false is if we have a T arrow F, OK? So I made Z true. Oh, that does confirm that premise 2 is true. And I made A, what did I make A? F, OK? So I made not A true. Delete, 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 delete. So notice now that I have, in fact, succeeded in making the premises true and the conclusion false. How did I do it? Well, I made Z true. 
I made A uh, false. I made B true. And I made C um, true as well. Okay. So even though line one, row one here, doesn't show that the argument is um, invalid, it doesn't show that it's valid either. Okay, because there happens to be another way for the conclusion to be false, corresponding to another row on the truth table, where we can have all true premises. So in fact, this argument is invalid, okay, and it tells me that I'm correct in that case. So I hope this was a decent um, survey of using the abbreviated truth table method in uh, several different circumstances.